Good Monday morning! I am MPJ and this is Fun Fun Function. This weekend I uh, was a lot of fun for me. I was out of town attending the wedding of a couple of friends of mine who, um, who are moving to Japan. But it also means I haven't had time to do a full episode and I am also tremendously hungover. But I want to do some video, so let's do some questions and <laughs> questions and answers. First out, what are your thoughts on static typing and JavaScript slack of? I come from a C-sharp background before JavaScript and I, I do not miss the types. I think that's for two reasons. One is because of my personality type and two is because I unit test a lot. So first my, my, my personality type, I, uh, I'm very easily distracted by tooling. Whenever I try, you know, a new to-do app or something like that, I get so caught up in that tool. I start spending time on how to do work rather than actually doing work. I cannot personally cope with systems like uh, the GTD system that a lot of people uses because I get caught up in them. I, I'm kind of like a sober alcoholic when it comes to that. I can't, I can't handle that. And for me, I kind of find types to be like that for me. I've started doing some Android development lately, uh, where you do Java, and I find myself falling back into this trap where I, oh, I could, this is the same, and oh wow, these things, these things form an inheritance hierarchy and oh I can pull this this up into an abstract base class and after a couple of hours I realized that I'm not really adding any value here I'm not making any progress on this software I am I'm not adding uh, any tests I'm not solving any bugs I am not uh, removing any unnecessary code uh, I, you could maybe claim that I'm making the project more maintainable but looking at the code and making these these abstractions and, and making things more generic, it's not clear if it's actually making things easier to maintain or, or better in any way. But it feels really productive because you're generating lots of code and you're making something that seems cool and it's so fun. Types, uh, they are alluring to me in a way that is not healthy. The second reason that I don't miss types a lot is that I really, really like to write unit tests. I write unit tests for everything. And static typing can uh, help you catch a lot of errors, but it's very seldom that I find myself, or I find that this static type system catches a bug that my test suite does not. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not writing any tests for specifically checking the types in JavaScript. I, I just find that if I write a test for the happy path of the application and the execution paths for a couple of different edge cases, that tends to catch all of those things anyway, because you just, you run through the code and it's, uh, the, the type system, I don't think it adds all that much if you have just a basic test suite. Oh, I just thought of a third reason why I don't miss types. I have a really hard time uh, keeping many things in my head at once, so I really like breaking my uh, process into very small problems and solving one problem at a time. And the problem with almost all static languages, TypeScript is not like this actually, so this does not apply to TypeScript, but Types is not something that you can add later. And that's a problem for me because that means that I, I have to figure out the algorithm and, and figure out my problem and also do the, the whole typing thing at the same time. And that, like, that makes me slower and more distracted and, and that just messes things up in my brain. That is also why I really don't like having a linter running in my editor because I want to defer, like, cleaning, making that final cleanup until uh, I'm finished. It's sort of, I, I also don't like uh, cleaning up my kitchen as I cook. I want to focus on cooking 
and then when the thing is in the oven, I get the cleaning. I don't dislike static typing. I think that it's a, it's a great tool uh, for many. It's not a great tool for me. And I also really f***ing hate when people try to give the idea that a language is bad if it doesn't have static typing. <coughs> Next question. How long does it uh, take to record a video? This one, is it's probably gonna take uh, one hour to record it and two hours to edit it, maybe. And then one more hour for doing preview images and uploading and stuff. A normal video, sort of like, uh, for instance, a monad video, that takes a lot longer time because I have to do the script, which can take like four to six hours and recording it takes about the same time, but the editing is longer, so perhaps three hours. So it's, I don't know, uh, between seven and 12 hours, I would say, is normal. What is a common mistake that even fairly experienced JS developers tend to make? Well, I think that a, like my favorite favorite mistake that experienced developers in general, not just JavaScript developers do, is to make things more complicated than they need to be. As a programmer, it's fun to do complicated solutions. And it also makes you feel smart. It's awesome. But the more code you add to your project, the more bugs you will add to your project. Always keep your code as simple as you can. The most common example of this that I see is caches. People see that, oh, I'm calling this thing from here and here and here. I, I should just store this in a variable here. And now you have introduced some state, and that means that you have introduced the possibility of a bug, which might be okay if that is actually hot code that is run hundreds of times per second. But if it's not, you are just wasting your time and you're making your application unnecessarily complex uh, for no good reason at all. What are your thoughts on the Elm language slash architecture and its viability in production? I'm gonna bundle this in with this question. State of Meteor in 2016, what do you think will happen? I'm a great fan of both Elm and Meteor. They are amazing technologies and if you haven't checked them out, I suggest you do because they are very inspiring. But they have an adoptability problem. Elm, for instance, uh, inspired to a large degree uh, React and Flux and Redux, but I think that Elm really needs to take a long hard look at itself and see like why are people like duplicating these concepts in other stacks and, and their stuff instead of just using Elm directly. What I think that a lot of programmers that design languages and frameworks tend to not think about is uh, its adoptability and how it fits into the ecosystem that people are already using. If you're just writing a library for an existing language in an existing package manager, then uh, that's pretty easy to get people to try out. But if you're writing a complete language with a new platform and a new package manager, you have just created yourself a massive marketing undertaking that requires quite a bit of financing and, and marketing to be able to pull off. And let's face it, like Elm does not have that. It lacks the backing that frameworks that React, for instance, has. And it took years for React to get to the position where it is now. And it's the same thing with Meteor. You see a lot of a lot of the things that were unique to Meteor when it launched are no longer no longer that unique because people draw drew um, drew inspirations from it and and uh, adopted it into their own solutions. But again, why didn't they just use Meteor? And the answer is it was was hard because you needed to replace everything at the same time. You couldn't just pick one thing. They had no way to sneak themselves into uh, the stacks of existing companies and existing software. You had to take like <laughs> Meteor or you had to take like Elm. <laughs> you couldn't just start adding this little part of Elm and then it grew. Elm or Meteor doesn't really work like that. And I really think that's a, that's a challenge for their adoptability. What the hell is this? I have something in my... Ew. 
This is some cake. Weddings, dude. Ugh. I have cake in my hair. What are the biggest mistakes devs make during unit tests, in your opinion? Not writing unit tests. How do you write a good unit test? Well, you write uh, horrible unit tests for several years and you learn from every one. And eventually you start writing good unit tests. Write bad unit tests and learn from them. You will get good eventually. What frameworks and libraries do you usually use? I don't. I, uh, I'm a problem first kind of guy. I, uh, I have a long elaboration on this in the Too Many Tools and Frameworks video. You should check that out. Well, that is all we have time for today. I am MPJ. This is Fun Fun Function. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.